here we are going to make a platform game where you have various things that you need to avoid. For example, this lava. Should I jump over it? If we didn't, oh no, the game would be over. And start. We could try that again. We have a wall that we have to jump around, ceiling that we can't go through. And then we have this owl that is guarding our precious donut. Let's see if I could jump over him. And I did. And therefore I win. Good job, Kevin. All right. So there's a lot of cool things that we do in this, so let's get going. I'm gonna create a new project. And this time I am going to keep the cat. It is his time to shine, so I hope he's up for it. I will call him Hero Cat. And let's make him a little smaller, down to 60. And I am going to make a new backdrop. And everything that we do in this game for the like the lava and the gravity and all the jumping and the walls and everything is going to be based off color. So in this example, I will be making the ground with one color, in this case, green to represent grass. Uh, it is definitely easier if you do it that way. Once you get the hang of it, if you want to be a little more experimental, that's totally fine. And I am going to have this be in vector. I'm going to get rid of the stroke. And I'm just going to draw a little block here. Let's bring that down a little, like that. I'm gonna go over here, draw another one. Let's make this a little wider. Let's draw a little step for him to go up. And let's draw a little ceiling. He's going into a cave of some sort. And let's try that, cool. Now I want to add my lava, the fiery hot molten lava. He definitely does not want to go into. And let's put that down there. And cool. All right, that looks like a good opening level to me. I'm going to go back to the cat, into the code. And when the green flag is clicked, I just want to get him in a nice spot there. Go there. So for gravity and jumping, we are going to be controlling the motion for that with variables. I'm going to make a variable, and I'm going to call this y-velocity. Velocity, I believe that is spelled correctly. And we are going to wrap everything in a forever loop because we always want to be checking throughout this what is happening. Is something pressed? Is he touching something? Whatever. And let's have an if-then-else statement where if he is touching, so go there, where sensing, there we go. If he is touching that color green, then we want to set our y velocity to zero. However, if he is not touching it, we want to change our y velocity by negative one. Oops, not negative 12. So if he is on the ground, the y velocity does not change. If he is not on the ground, the y velocity changes by one. Just like gravity, if you are not touching the ground, you're gonna fall. Now let's have him jump so that he can get off the ground. I am gonna get another if then statement where we want two conditions to be true for him to be able to jump. We want him to be, or we want the up air to be pressed. However, we also want him to be on the ground. He should not be able to jump if he's in the middle of the air. That'd be kind of weird. So let's have an and condition in there. And if the up arrow is pressed and he is touching color green, if that is the case, then we want to set our y velocity to 10, just like a jump. So we, uh, we press the up arrow and it immediately goes up and then it gradually goes down and down and down and down and down until he's at the apex, and then he starts to come down. Finally, all of these variables don't do a darn thing because they're not actually controlling the y velocity right now. So I am going to, I always want to change y. <laughs> I want to change y by y velocity. There's the velocity. All right. And let's try this. Now if I press the up arrow, cool. 
you can see it jumps up and down like that. All right, now this looks pretty good. However, as you start to move the cat around a little more, it's not gonna be as reliable as it is right here. So we need an extra check. And for that, we're gonna use these my blocks. And the cool thing about the my blocks is that they allow, if I'm, I'm, I'm gonna make one here, and we will call this check ground. And we want to make sure that they run without a screen refresh. So basically we could run some code that calculates all these different things without actually refreshing the screen and like having the user see how they change. So this is really useful for some of these very sort of like minute checks that um, we, like, we don't want to have the screen refresh for. So we're going to click that. It's very important that you click that. It will not work if you don't. All right, and we want to check if he's going down. So the way that we can check that if he's going down is that if our y velocity is less than zero, then we want to repeat this until he is not touching the green anymore. All right, so let's go check grounds and we're gonna change Y. We're gonna change Y by one. And then after that, outside of this, we're gonna change Y by negative one. So what does this do? Let's put this in here. So as it goes through this, it runs this check ground function over here. So when we say check ground and say, hey, go over here, there's this thing called check ground. We define it right here and whatever is under here is what will happen when we run check ground. So once we run check ground, and this all happens without, um, without the screen refreshing at all, it checks if he's going down. And then if he, if he is going down and it starts to go below the screen like that, then until he's not touching the color green anymore, it'll go up, 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 up until he's slightly one pixel above. And then we go down by one. So this check ground function always guarantees that he's not going below the ground because that could definitely be an issue. Even in a previous tutorial I've done before, it could be a little buggy with him going below the ground. It's a very difficult thing to check. So this function helps us guarantee that he is not doing that. Now let's get a move them left and right. So we are going to go to control here. We are going to get that if then statement. It's being kind of annoying. And now I'm going to get another if then statement. And then it is going to check if the left arrow is pressed or if the right arrow is pressed. So let's do left arrow and then right arrow. And I want have these get in there with uh, all right sorry for that confusion there we're gonna have these two if then statements and then directly after those if then statements you want these box make sure they're not in there like I did on the first one so in the previous tutorial that I did I was if the left arrow is pressed we change x by negative 10 if the right arrow is pressed we change x by 10 we're kind of gonna do the same thing but it's gonna be a little bit more complex so for this we're gonna use a my block and let's call this move x. And for this one, we are going to add an input, which is a really cool, powerful thing that we could do with our my blocks here and our just functions and programming in general. And we will call this parameter uh, just x that works. Make sure we run it without a screen refresh. And where can I put this? Let's put this down here. And we are going to have it so that when the left arrow is pressed, we want to move x by negative 10. And if the right arrow is pressed, we want to change x by positive 10. And just to give you an idea of how these arguments work, it's pretty straightforward, where if we define that, we want to change x by whatever this value is. So now we can go left and right like that. However, ah, he goes through like that. So that is obviously no good. Now, in order to get rid of that, we are going to make a new variable 
call this one slope. I am going to go through this one because this is probably the most complex part of this tutorial. I'm going to just put this all together and then I'll kind of explain it after I'm done with it. So I am going to do that, change x by x. We want to set this slope initially to zero. Then we want a repeat until block. And we want a repeat until block with an or operator in it. We want to repeat until slope. So I can get that over there is either greater than eight or it is not touching. color green. And what do we want it to repeat? We want it to change y by 1. And then we also want to change the slope by 1. And I got all the, um, I got this right here from the scratch wiki, which is an excellent resource uh, trying to find reliable ways of doing things. I forget if I sort of change things around a little bit, but um, very good source over there. And then we want to check if the slope, if it is greater than eight, then we want to change X. the minus by zero minus x. Oops. And we want to change y by slope. Cool. All right. So this is the block right here. Make sure you have it all exactly like that. Now, what in the heck does this do here? So first thing that it does immediately after we press the button, it changes X by X. So it changes X by 10. Then we have a variable called slope. We initially set it to zero. Now, remember, this should be outside of that. <laughs> Sorry about telling you to uh, copy that exactly and then doing it wrong. It should be outside of it. We want to repeat this until one of two conditions is met. This variable called slope, if it's greater than eight, and we're increasing slope each iteration through this line, or it is not touching the color green. So when it goes to the right, boom, it goes here. And before any of this stuff changes, it starts to go up. Up, 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 up. All right, so it'll go up eight pixels. If it goes up eight pixels, or it is not touching this, then it will go on to the next part. So it checks if slope has gotten greater than eight. Now, if you are touching a wall, this slope will have gotten greater than eight because it is not touching it. However, if you are not touching a wall, the slope will not have gotten greater than eight because once you get above there, oh, it is not touching this color anymore. Let's get out of this loop. Therefore, the slope is not greater than eight. So one, two, three, oh, it's not touching that. Okay, cool, now we go down to the next thing. Then once you go down here, it checks. Is that slope greater than eight? If it is, then we change x, or um, we change x back. So if this was 10 here, it would go back to the original spot, and then it would go down by the amount that slope changed. So it just basically resets it back to what it originally was. So let's see if this works here. I hope that was a reasonable explanation. I think that's a very complex topic, but go there. Oh. Why is, oh, I messed up. All right, so this should be zero minus slope. 
it was just going up instead of going back to the original spot. There we go. Boom. Cool, cool, cool. All right, so now we have a wall working. However, we can go right through a ceiling. And we do not want it going through a ceiling. So we're going to make another my block. We have check ground, move X. We're going to call this one check ceiling. Ceiling, I think that's spelled correctly. So we're going to out screen refresh. We do not need an input for this one. So check ceiling. I'm going to bring out an if then statement where if we want to check that he's going up. So if set this one, y velocity, if that is greater than zero, me and operator here, if both y velocity is greater than zero and he happens to be touching the color green, go behind there. Try to get that into a nice wide open space so we could have a lot of room to breathe. There we go. All right, the fine ceiling. Now we want to we want it to go back down basically once he hits that ceiling. So I'm going to repeat until. Bring out this touching color green again, but we want to repeat it until he's not touching the color green. And we just want to change X or Y by negative one. Not negative two. And then we want to, if he's going up, once he hits the ceiling, we don't want him to go up anymore. So we just want to set Y velocity to zero. And that should be outside of the repeat until Y velocity is zero. So let's try this. All right, goes there. Oh, that's not good. What happened? <laughs> All right, I uh, defined it here. I defined check ceiling. However, I forgot to actually put it into the code. So it's just definition there. Let's try this. There we go. All right, cool. All right, so if you got this far and everything's working, congratulations. That's the hard part. I know it's tricky. There's probably a lot of frustrated people out there that you know might have messed one of things too up. So if you got this far, be very proud of yourself. It's a challenging thing to do. Now let's finish up this game. If you've gotten this far, the rest of this should be a piece of cake. So what we're going to do is we want to make it so that if he touches this lava, the game is over. So I'm going to make a backdrop. Whoops, I'm not going to pick a backdrop. I'm gonna paint one. And do this however you want. I am going to do do a fill here. And the game is over. I want you to be just, oh no, just dark, black, horrible. Convert that to vector. And I will do the pixel text this time. And game. There we go. Game over nerd all right uh da, 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 da. make that bigger oops all right let me get that all right cool all right so that is our backdrop and now let's have that broadcast the code here. So we're always going to check. I'm going to have another green flag. So this is kind of a, it's a separate situation over there. And I want to do all the sort of like level and the game over stuff and another one green flag click. So when green flag click forever, if, oops. First of all, when the green flag is clicked, we want to go to the original backdrop. So when the green flag is clicked, switch backdrop to backdrop one. I always forget to name these properly. Um, I really should, I'm, I'm gonna do that actually. All right, so that, this one is level one. This one is game over. And this one doesn't need to exist. All right, so I go back here, the code. 
when the green flag is clicked, we want to switch backdrop to level one. Now, if he's touching this color, right there, then we want to create a new message. There's that. Broadcast message, game over. All right, and I'm gonna go to my backdrops. When I receive game over, I want to switch the backdrop to game over. I probably should have had one green flag click do the original one here, but it's all right, whoops. I go there and game over. All right, now when the green flag is clicked, we want to show the cat. But when we broadcast game over, we want to hide them. Let's try that one more time. Oh, game over, nerd. Ha 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 ha. All right. Now, let's get this to the next level. So we're going to determine the next level by if the cat is over here. So how we determine that is if his X position is greater than a certain amount. So I'm going to have an if then statement. Whoops. I'm going to have an if then statement. There we go. Where if his X position If that is greater than right now, his exposition is 213, 213. We are going to broadcast new message called level two. Not level one, level two. All right. Get that out of there. I don't like that. And I'm going to make, ah, I did that again. I'm going to paint a new level. How do I get that color again? Let's fill this here and go there, fill that. All right, now if I go back there, it is there. I'm in vector and I want to, cool. All right, now he's there. So when it goes to, Level two, I want to switch the backdrop to oops, backdrop or level two. All right. When I say level two, we switch backdrop to level two. And now go back here. All right, that should work. The last thing I want to do is I just want to make sure. What's this thing right here? That when he goes to level two, he goes to the correct position. So when I receive level two, then he should go there. All right, let's try this. There we go, cool. All right. Got a little, tiny little hill there. I don't know exactly what that is, but. All right, and now let's have our enemy in the next level. So I am gonna add a new one. I had it be, I forget what I had it be. What was it? Well, let's have it be this hippo anyway. It looks like a monstrous villain. So I'm gonna go there. I need to make the hippo smaller. All right. Now the hippo is gonna go back and forth. So he will start right here. And then he's gonna glide back to here. Let's have him go right here. And Scratch doesn't like change the numbers anymore. What, what, what's up with that? Why, why did they stop doing that? It was a nice feature. All right, so we have to manually do this. All right, so that will go there. And now we want him to go back and forth like he should be facing to the left too. So let's give him a new costume. Duplicate it and select him. 
and flip it horizontal. Alright, so initially we're going to have him go there. Then we want him to go there. He's going to go. Let's switch costumes. So I think A, if he's going to the right, he will be switching to his first costume, which is A1, or just A. Then he will switch his costume to A2 and go back and forth. Let's see if this works. <laughs> he's, he's going backwards. <laughs> All right, so let's switch that around. All right. And however, even if he was going the correct way, that was too far. So let's have negative 77. Cool. And this should also be negative 77. All right, you can come down a little maybe. 10 and 10. Whoops, that was the wrong way. So this would be zero. Oh, I'm going the wrong way again. Negative 25, negative 25. All right, perfect. All right, and now we want that when. When I receive level two. And any other time, we want to hide. So when I receive, or when the green flag is clicked, we want him to hide. And when I receive game over, we want to hide. And find out where there's going to be another event called win. And we also want him to hide when it's winning. And finally here, when I receive level two, we want him to show. And we want to check if it's touching the cat, it should broadcast game over. So if touching, actually, that's not a good place for that. When the uh, when I receive level two forever. If he's touching, not the mouse pointer, but hero cat. Nope, not the edge, hero cat. Then we want to broadcast game over. Game is over. All right, is that everything? Let's see if that guy works. Goes there. And, whoa, no game. Hmm. What happened there? There's, uh, if touching hero cat, broadcast game over. Hide, hide, hide. I see the game over. Hmm. Why did that happen? All right, so I realized what I forgot to do is that this if X position is greater than 213, that could be at any time. So when I was going here before, even if I go here past 213, it still kind of like resets it. So we don't want that. So we're going to have another condition here where if X position is greater than 213 and backdrop number. If it equals one, there. So all the backdrops, if you go here, they have a number too, so one, two, three. So you can check what the backdrop is if you want to have code conditional and based on whatever that backdrop number is. So now when I go over here and I touch that guy, no matter what I do, it's all over. I feel bad. Game over. No, that that shouldn't be. Game over.
game over. It's okay. All right. There we go. That's 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 much more positive. We shouldn't be calling people names like that. All right. Uh, so now here, hippo. Ba -ba 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 -ba. Um, now we just need the game done. All right, so let's do another check, and we are going to check here. Oops. Another if then statement, where this time if the exposition is greater than 213 and backdrop number equals 2, then we want to broadcast win. All right, and let's create a winning scene. It'll be much more optimistic than that black one. Let's have it. Oh, this is a nice little aqua. Cool. And let's switch that to bitmap so we could paint fill it. Uh, so soothing. Let's switch back to vector for some text. Good job. You win. We are so proud of you. All right. There we go. All right, and now we need to go, once the cat goes beyond there, it is going to trigger that screen. Also, while I'm at it, this Y velocity and slope, I want to get rid of those, or just how they, how they look there. Um, one thing that I did that I think is a cool feature where I got a piece of the backdrop and, oops, In this one right here, I had a donut there. So if you go to the code, if you add a new sprite, this is not necessarily obvious. So we want a treat, and the treat will be in food. It's a hungry cat that likes donuts. And if you go to the costume and donut, you can just select it in vector, and then Command C to copy. And now I could delete this if, it's the third time I've done that. Uh, if I go to the backdrops, eh. Where's my, there we go. Oops. And we go into here. Now I'll go here. You can paste it, and it shows up. So that's a nice way of getting in something that you want into there. Uh, so that should be it. Let's try this. Oops. <laughs> All right, see if I can get it over him. Arr, arr. Let's try this one more time. Gosh darn. All right, maybe I should make this smaller. This is, this is my last shot, and then I'm making it a little easier. I'm going to let him go back and forth. There. All right. To make them smaller to like 30. I should have just stuck with the other character. Oh, come on. <laughs> All right, you, you can calibrate your game however you want. Uh, I clearly messed up on the difficulty of this one. One more try here. There we go. Oh, but it doesn't work. What happened? Oh, that's backdrop three. All right. So I'm gonna go back here and backdrop three. I need to actually listen for the you win event. So in backdrops, uh, when I receive win, I want to switch the backdrop to, I forgot the name these again, is that the correct one? Uh, backdrop one. All right, so backdrop one, 
And then I also want to hide the hippo when I receive win. Good job. That's already done. And when I receive win hide. All right. Hopefully I can do this in one fell swoop. You stupid freaking... Hey, there we go. Uh, we'll have a lifelong hatred for hippos now, but actually those guys are deadly. Uh, but we have a complete game, so I feel like this game is very extensible. You can kind of do whatever you want with it. So if you made it this far and you're successful, uh, great job. This, uh, uh, this, is, this is a lot of work, so um, awesome job on it. And uh, yeah, it was good. Have a good one. Later.